Good afternoon team. Today Humble and I went for a drive and we ended up here at Moana. When we got here I immediately ran across my brother and we ended up going out in his boat. This may not be the best beach in South Australia, it's probably not even the best beach in the metropolitan area, but it's a very popular beach and certainly the first one uh, going south that you can drive a car on.
In a former life when I was at university, I used to live not two minutes walk from here. So I've spent a lot of time down on this beach. On the way home we're just going to do a little bit of housekeeping for the uh, last episode. You might remember the monument we couldn't reach. In research, in November 1839 Governor Gordon and Captain Charles Sturt conceived a plan to explore the lands north and west of Northwest Bend. They proposed to leave from Currency Creek crossing Lake Alexandrina to proceed up the Murray to the Great Bend. Proceed to search country north and west and upon their return returned to Adelaide Overland, all in pursuit of finding fertile lands. The progress upriver was intentionally slow to reach their Great Bend base at the Burrow Creek Murray River intersection by December 10th. The party of Gawler, Sturt, Inman, Craig and reluctantly for Sturt, 18 year old Brian departed on the 11th on the expedition proper. On the first night the party found themselves 32 miles from the river on good grasslands. Unfortunately, they were already in peril. So much water had leaked away from the barrels that the horses were rationed. By the end of the second day, there was almost no water left. Sturt advised a return to the base camp. Instead, a native fire was spotted atop Mount Bryan, which the party attempted, against Sturt's advice, to find. They found nothing. The next day, the 13th, again very hot, the party decided to wait until sunset and then push for the river. Gawler and Brian left at 5pm on the two strongest horses with a mind to send aid for the rest of the party. Sturt, Inman and Craig left at 7pm riding all night. The next morning their horses were flagging badly. The day was again extremely hot. By early afternoon a stop was forced. A horse was bled for the moisture. By 7am on the 14th Gawler and Brian were within 12 miles of the base camp. Here Gawler switched horses with Brian in mind to gain the river and send relief for Sturt, Inman and Craig. His horse was somewhat knocked up. Brian was to follow at a slower pace. Gawler left Brian with compass and provisions and in apparently good condition. Gawler found the river. Upon reaching the base camp on the morning of the 15th, he found Sturt, Inman and Craig already arrived. On the 16th, Sturt, Inman and a native tracker followed Gawler's tracks back to where Gawler and Brian had parted. There was no sign of Brian, though he was tracked another five miles where he left the horse and left a note saying he was heading southeast towards the river. Brian was never seen again. Gawler's horse eventually made its own way back to Adelaide. A search was made, but eventually defeat had to be admitted and the party set out to return to Adelaide overland. Stuart was a bushman to his bootstraps. Even in the extremes of no water, in such country, in such hot days, if his advice had been followed, there would have been no incident. There is one more part to this story. On the 23rd of December, John Craig, Eliza Arbuckle and Isaac Hernshaw were separated from the main party. Setting the nighttime fire, Hernshaw's gunpowder flask exploded in his face. Hernshaw suffered horrible injuries but survived under the care of Eliza and Craig to return to Adelaide. This story is recorded on the monument we failed to reach, though we were right there. An account of the expedition can be found on Trove in the register of January 4th, 1840. The Charles Sturt Museum in Grange also carries an account. Thank you for coming to the channel and we will see you next time.